Hi, I'm Ashley Lakovich Van Gorp, and I'm here at the Woman Deliver 2019 conference with Lena. Hi, Lena. Welcome. Hi. Delighted to be here. So, Lena, the first thing I'm going to ask you is about your t-shirt. Can you explain a little bit about that for us? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> well, this t-shirt says feminist in Arabic. So it's the English word, but an Arabic script. And the reason we did that is because in Arabic, there isn't any agreed upon translation of the word. So nobody has a clear sense of the one word used to describe feminism in that language. However, everybody knows feminism in English. And you say it and people bristle right away. So what we wanted to do was claim that space name the word and own it, and try and understand why people were trying to distance themselves from it. Even young women who seem to be activists, um, human rights supporters, fighting for equality and social justice, I'd say, are you a feminist? And they say, no. And I couldn't understand why. And that's not even to talk about the rest of the region that doesn't want anything to do with it at all. So we said, all right, this is obviously a sore point, And you know, what do you do with a sore point? You like poke it to see what's going on there and why people don't understand what this word really means. And so this is our conversation starter. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good shirt. So my second question um, is a bit more somber. Um, the situation in Yemen. I'm wondering if you can share with us um, what you know about the state of women's health in Yemen today. Well, the reality in Yemen, as in every single conflict context that I've seen and worked in, and I've worked in many, as you know, uh, is that women and girls are the most vulnerable. They are vulnerable anyway before the emergency starts, but this is amplified. So we're talking about sexual violence that has increased dramatically. We're talking about the need for sexual and reproductive health and all of that care around it that has not been provided. The challenge with Yemen is this, that it is a forgotten emergency. We say that about a lot of emergencies, but right now the needs are in the billions of dollars in terms of humanitarian aid for this population and it's funded at barely 10 percent so if you imagine like that's the overall needs and when we're talking about what comes to women and girls or what comes for things like gender-based violence that is a you know a point zero what is it is so marginal it is embarrassing and I wish that the money that we contribute to those things to women and girls and to sexual violence matched even half of the rhetoric the language we use talking about how important it is to prevent to protect to to mitigate risk but we don't do it. We don't. We literally don't put our money where our mouth is. And I think Yemen has been the most stark example of that. Well, thank you for sharing that. So now a question about power and passing power. So how do you think that leaders like yourself can pass power to the next generation of activists? Well, I see that they already have power. They already are leaders. You know, this like future leaders idea. No, they're leaders now. Um, and I certainly don't think I was half of that at, at that age, but I see that power already. I think what I do is hold up the mirror and show them the power they have because they don't, I think they don't know what they're capable of and they don't see it. And so for me to nudge and to say, look at you and you're awesome and you can do this and you've got this. And so what I do is as much as I can uh, bring young people in kind of bring the table to them, you know, not give them a seat at the table. I hate that expression, yeah, yeah. right? Let's go to their table if they've got one. Let's move the table over if they don't. I mean, we can flog the table metaphor, but the point is we have to go to where they are and be where they are and then also be what they want us to be. So it shouldn't even be me on the stage or, you know, I have members of my team who are extraordinary and who have a stronger voice than mm -hmm. I ever will. So just giving them that chance and that space, you know, we keep saying that everyone has a voice, but not everyone has that microphone, right? Right. So right, right. how are we going to make sure that that microphone gets around? That's wonderful. So when these young leaders come to you and they ask you then for advice, what do you say? What's that one piece of advice you give to them? Oh, know your own power. It really is. Well, I also say get angry. Like, don't be afraid to get angry. Because I think, you know, that anger and that rage, I mean, I, you know, I, this for me, it started when I was very young. I was 13, 14, when I took a class and I started to understand what female genital cutting was. You know, it was, it was horrible. And I was mad. I was pissed off. So this has come from a place of anger. And that anger is what is driving me and what has, like, it's been decades. We won't say how many decades. But it's, it's the rage that... That, it, that we should have. It is rage that is right. It is rage that, you know, look, it's 2019, we keep saying, my God, what is this? I mean, I'm not impressed with 2019 at all. 2019 so far has failed women and girls. So be angry and stay angry. And that's, that's the rage that's gonna give you courage and the courage that's gonna, that it, it will take to get things done. It might not be you or your generation or the next one, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. 
You can't not do it. You can't sit by and watch it happen. Awesome, awesome advice for all of us. Thank you so much for joining us today, sure. Lena.